doesn't love a good superhero or a super heroine. Am I right? I mean, if I had a superpower, it would probably be like flying or something. Besides the cool costumes and the amazing accessories and the superhuman strength and the incredible powers, I think one of the reasons we love superheroes so much is because of what they do. They see something wrong happening around them and they step in to make it right. They take action to solve the problem. They step in to defend. In other words, they do something about it. For us though, if we're going to do something, we need to learn more about injustice and take a look at what God has to say about it. Let's start by defining injustice together. Have you heard of the word justice before? Justice simply means something is right, fair, or equal. Injustice is the opposite of that. So when we talk about injustice, we're talking about the things in our world that are unfair, unequal, or not right. There are probably a lot of things that might come to mind when you think about injustices in our world. Things like children who are starving, families living in poverty, natural disasters or racism. That's the kind of stuff we know is wrong. But if we're honest, it's also the stuff that feels really big. It feels like stuff we can't do much about. Honestly, I get that feeling. Some of the most obvious injustices in the world feel like challenges we just can't overcome. And because of that, we feel like we just have to hang up our superhero cape and let somebody older or wiser or more powerful do something about it. But what if I told you that you have a lot more power to do something about injustice than you realize? What if I told you that right now, you have the potential to do something about the hurts and wrongs and unfair things you see in the world around you? Whether we realize it or not, there are so many injustices, big and small, happening in the world around us every day. The problem is that often, if they're not big or huge or obvious wrongs, we just don't see them. Sure, we might question them or wonder why these things are happening. We don't recognize them as injustices. To us, this is just the way things are. It's part of the way the world works. Think about it. Did you know that some teenagers can afford to get a tutor when they're struggling at school, but others can't? Some people don't get to join the team because they can't pay the fees. Some people have to protest in the streets in order to get their voice heard. Did you know that some schools can give all their students laptops for distance learning, but others don't have access to that kind of technology? Some students are forced to wear the same clothes every day. Two students of different races can get caught for the same thing at school, but only one might get in trouble. Some middle schoolers get bullied every week on Instagram, on TikTok, on Snapchat, but nobody speaks up about it. Did you know that a guy and a girl might have the exact same grades in class, but one will be treated like they're smarter? Did you know some people have no money, so they have to beg for it on the side of the street? For some of you, this stuff isn't brand new. You notice it because you've experienced it. You see it because you've lived it. For you, some of this injustice is very real. But for others of you, this may be brand new stuff that you're just noticing. And all of this stuff, the stuff that's happening in your school or in your community or your neighborhood or even right here at church that just feels off to you, that stuff is probably the result of some kind of injustice, some kind of unfair or unequal treatment of people. So what do we do about it? I think there's something inside of most of us that wants to see things made right. We can't be part of the solution to problems that we don't even see as problems. Remember, we said the first step to making things right is to simply start seeing. So how do we do that? What can we do to open our eyes to the injustices around us? Let me let you in on a secret. We weren't the first people to have this problem. We weren't the first people to experience a world filled with injustices. And we aren't the first people to not notice them from time to time. We aren't the first people who needed a little help opening our eyes and seeing injustice. I think that's part of the reason Jesus made a habit of pointing out things to people that they hadn't seen or noticed before. So much of his ministry on earth was about helping people see the world through his eyes. And today we're gonna look at one of the times he did just that. There was this guy named Matthew who actually experienced life with Jesus. He knew him, he followed him, and he wrote down a lot of what he saw Jesus say and do. And today we're gonna take a look at some of what Matthew wrote down. So when we're reading his account of Jesus's life, we're reading it from somebody who saw and experienced it firsthand. That's pretty cool. In this particular encounter, 
Jesus was trying to help those who were listening to him speak understand that part of following him means seeing and caring about the injustices around them. And what we're about to read, Jesus was comparing the righteous people to the unrighteous people. Now, when we talk about righteous people, we're talking about people who do good and want to help others. And when we talk about unrighteous people, we're talking about people who don't do good and aren't willing to help others. Let's look at what Jesus said. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Okay. So maybe you're hearing this and thinking what the people who were listening back then thought. What in the world is Jesus talking about here? When was he hungry or thirsty or in need of clothing? When was he sick or in prison? That's not anywhere in the Bible, right? Well, technically you're right. Those injustices didn't happen directly to Jesus. And so his followers didn't really see them. They didn't recognize that responding to them might be important parts of showing their love for him. But look at how Jesus responded. The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Did you catch that? Jesus was saying that the righteous people, which remember is just another way to say people who choose to do good and want to help others, are people who see and look for the injustices around them. They care about the least of these, which are those who need the most help, feel the most pain, or get the worst treatment. They recognize when someone is hungry, or in prison, or sick, or left out. They see the injustice in the way these people are treated. They see the injustice in their circumstances. They care about it, they act on it, they do something about it. Why? Because in caring for those who are being treated as less than or left out, they're showing they care about what Jesus cares about and that they love the people that God loves. I think the people listening at the time probably struggled with some of the same things we struggle with when it comes to injustice. They didn't see it. They didn't recognize it happening around them. And because of that, they didn't respond. But Jesus was reminding us that his people are those who look for people in their neighborhoods or schools who need the most help. They feel the most pain or get the worst treatment. And whether you're a follower of Jesus or still trying to figure out this whole faith thing, I think this is important for all of us because we all want a world that's better, right? We all want the wrongs we see to be right. We want things to be fair and good and equal. And God wants that too. And that all starts with seeing. Before you do something about injustice, you have to see it. It's easy to think something you don't really see isn't really there. It's easy to think that because you don't recognize it or aren't impacted by it, and it just isn't that big of a deal. But the truth is that injustice is everywhere. And if we want to be people who do something about it, we have to start by seeing it. Remember, before you do something about injustice, you have to see it. Now, if you are experiencing any of the injustices we talked about today, and I know there are some of you who are, I wanna say that I am so sorry. What you've experienced isn't right or fair or good. But I don't want you to check out just yet because what you are experiencing matters. And we're gonna be talking about what to do when you're in that situation more next week. But for today though, I want us to focus on this. We have to see the injustice before we can do something about it. So how can we open our eyes to the injustices happening in our world? First, move close enough to see it. You know those eye charts you have to look at when you go to the eye doctor? It's harder to read the letters and words on them when they're like far away, right? The closer you get, the easier it is to recognize what's on the chart. Well, the same is true with injustice. If we wanna see injustice in the world around us, we have to be brave enough to stay close enough to see it. We can't turn our eyes or shrug it off even when what we see makes us feel uncomfortable. Instead, 
We have to put ourselves in the position to see it. That means maybe getting to know someone at school who's different than you. It means talking to a few different trusted adults about some of the questions you have about potential injustices you see in your school or your community or your neighborhood. It even means asking God to help you see it, to change the way you see the people and the circumstances around you. Second, be curious enough to learn. The quickest way to see injustice is to listen to the people experiencing it. So try that. Stop and listen. When someone tells you about an injustice they've experienced, just listen. Don't argue or change the subject or give your opinion or try to fix it right then and there. One of the first things you can do to act against injustice is to be a listener. The more you listen, the more you'll learn. And the more you learn, the more you'll see. Even if someone doesn't open up to you about an injustice they're experiencing, there are still ways you can learn about injustice from others. One place to start is to pick one injustice you've heard about today and research the history on it. Learn where it started, how it started, and why it started. Then research some people or organizations that are doing good work to help fight that injustice today. Now, here's a heads up. This stuff might make you uncomfortable at first. It might be hard to hear about or difficult to see somebody experiencing injustice around you. And it's certainly awful to experience injustice yourself. You might struggle to understand it or recognize why it's so bad or even agree that what someone is telling you is wrong or unjust. Don't shy away from the conversation just because it makes you uncomfortable. Instead, do your best to listen. Take your questions to adults in your life you can trust and keep asking God to help you see injustice for what it is. That's your first step, and trust me, it's a big one. Be curious about your own experience too. Here's what I mean. Have you ever experienced an injustice, but you've brushed it off because everyone around you kept saying it's no big deal? Like when you're really struggling in math class. Some of your classmates can afford to get a tutor after school, but your family just doesn't have the extra money to do that. So you study as much as you can on your own just to get the passing grade. Or maybe you've even participated in injustice without realizing it. Like when you made a hurtful comment on social media that upset someone of a different race than you. You just didn't understand what your comment meant in the first place. So you didn't see why it was such a big deal. You can't know what you'll discover until you get curious. So be curious about how injustice may be impacting your life and the lives of those around you. If we want to do something about the injustice around us, we have to start with moving close enough to see the injustice. Being curious about others' experiences with injustice and thinking about your own experiences with injustice. Maya Angelou, a famous woman who wrote about injustice a lot, summed this up perfectly. She said this, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. That's my hope for you, that you'll begin to see what or who you haven't seen before and then you'll begin to act so that together we can do something. Remember, before you do something about injustice, you have to see it. One of the best places to start talking about what it means to see injustice is with your group. We've created these groups to be a safe place for you to listen, ask questions, and encourage each other to do something great in this world together.